Hey everybody, welcome to another master class. Can't wait to cook for you guys today. It's been so exhilarating to do these classes and um, I'm so honored to be able to have a group like you. Um, so this time, no cocktails uh, with our wine, darn it, but <clears throat> we do have our two wines of this afternoon. Um, my new 2019 Vio Blanc, it is a, a very, very special wine. In 2019, it did a very, very, very small kind of trial run uh, with the Viognier in Sonoma Valley, but I didn't have enough for full, complete Viognier varietal. So it gave me an opportunity to take both the Viognier 2019 and the 2019 Sauvignon Blanc and blend them together and create a proprietary blend. It is quite spectacular. So go ahead and open up the bottle, take your glass, pour it right in, Cheers. Oh, that's good. So let's start off. Make sure your water is boiling and you have your tables you have your tablespoon of salt in your water, as well as your teaspoon of baking soda. So with the potatoes, as I said with my description, golf ball size or racquetball size, but not a tennis ball or a baseball. They're just too big and it take a longer period of time to cook. Here's a little trick though, a little hack. <clears throat> if you want to have perfect um, quarters. You know, the potato always has a flat side, right? What you do is you lay the flat side down, go down the middle, and then crossways, and there you have the perfect quartered potato. And so I have a couple more here I'm going to do. So my potatoes are ready. Let me walk over and pour these in. I'm just going to move them around a little bit. And I'm going to set a timer for eight minutes. Let me set a timer real quick. Okay, excellent. All right, so now, with the rusted roasted potatoes, they're cooked twice. They cook 80% here and then in the oven again. So they're cooked twice. I love to do is, in the recipe, we have the um, rosemary and garlic with butter. So let's get the pan ready. Let's put them on low for a second. I'm gonna get my olive oil and my butter. So about four tablespoons each. I'm just gonna eyeball it, four count roughly. And then I'm gonna grab my butter grab four or so tablespoons, roughly. And then we're gonna go ahead and make sure my garlic is chopped and my rosemary is chopped. So a couple fun things I like to do, as you saw last time, got the garlic just started a little bit. So I'm gonna take off the ends of the garlic here. We don't need those pieces. And then we're gonna go ahead and just smash them down and then chop them up. If you have a microplane, you can do it. If you have a garlic press, you can do it as well. The goal is just to make it really, really easy and rustic. So I'm chopping these guys up. Nothing too small. I mean, you know, you can, but again, you have to control your heat if it's too small. Okay, so the garlic is ready to go. Let me grab the rosemary. With the rosemary, fresh rosemary, we actually grab it out of our garden. And um, to strip the leaves, you just go, you take the, the, right before you get to the soft end, this is the new growth. So you can see it's very pliable. Um, you get to the more of the non-pliable, the, the stronger end and you grab and you pull away and go down the stalk. And you strip the stalk of the leaves and then I'll go with the fresh, because it'll break on me, you go the opposite direction with the fresh. So now I have my rosemary here. I'm gonna check on the butter, it's talking to me now because obviously there's water in the butter. So I'm gonna just put that on the side for a second. And then we just chop the rosemary. And you wanna do a rough chop, not too fine. I'm gonna put the rosemary in first. Again, I have the butter and oil off the heat because remember you have garlic too and you have fresh rosemary so I'm gonna put this in rosemary and garlic and butter and oil <laughs> Come on. that's like that's a marriage made in heaven for sure I'm gonna put it back on the, on the flame I'm gonna turn the flame up a little bit about medium I want to saute the garlic I want the rosemary to be hot enough that the oils break apart nothing's turning golden brown yet you want to saute it you want to just pull it right before you see any goldenness to it. We're about 20 seconds away on a medium heat. And I just saw my first little golden, so now I'm gonna turn this off. If you can see, again, this pan was put aside and they're still cooking, but they're not turning color. That's perfect. I'm gonna grab my knife and I'm gonna check the potatoes. They're gonna need about another two minutes. I'm gonna adjust the time. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead now and let's get the, 
the next frying pan that you're going to have for the breadcrumbs and just get it warm. So just turn it on low. So, you know, one inch cubes basically. This is about uh, a little bit more than three cups roughly, but if you bought your bread today, that's not a problem. We're going to just toast it up. I bought a, a new loaf yesterday, cut it in half, left it out all night long. By the time I got here this morning, uh, this afternoon when I was prepping, it was ready to go. So, and then I cubed it up, and now even the cubes are even drier too, which is, which is absolutely perfect. And we're going to get to that in a second. I just heard the timer. I'm going to check the potatoes. Because you, you don't want to have the fork or knife pierce all the way through, then because they break up. The next step, you'll see how they break up. See how it goes in halfway? See how it just glides right in? That's where, exactly where you want it. It's still firm. Okay, those guys are ready. Turn off the heat. Let's go ahead and drain the water here in a minute. We're going to use the same pot that we cooked the potatoes in. So get all the water out of there. We're going to hit them with olive oil, just a little bit of olive oil. So grab your olive oil bottle, maybe like, I don't know, two tablespoons roughly. And then you want to grab a spoon. You can also shake your pot, your, your um, pot as well. So you want to kind of move this around a bit, kind of be aggressive with the potatoes. And you're going to start seeing they're getting bumpy, right? They're breaking up a bit. There you go. See, they're getting kind of slimy. Kind of not a very appealing word to use, but they're kind of, you know, they're getting soft. Just a little bit more. Nice and soft. Okay, they look absolutely perfect. So let's grab your sheet pan. And we're going to lay them out in the sheet pan. You want to try to make sure there's some space in between the potatoes and separate them a little bit. Okay, so now your oven should be ready to go. If you have convection roast or roast it's, or con straight convection, um, it's 450. Uh, and if it's regular bake, regular oven, it's 500. Put the timer on for 20 minutes. So now 20 minutes. So before we move on to toasting the beautiful cubes of bread, Time for a wine break for everybody. Uh, let me get the big pan here. And I'm, again, it was nice and warm. So I'm gonna do a little olive oil. So here's my beautiful cubed bread, stale bread, so to speak. I'm gonna hit it a little bit with olive oil right now. You know, it says like two, three, four tablespoons, but I'm like an eye guy. So I'm gonna hit the pan as well. When I pull the pan off, make sure it's not too hot. Put some olive oil, about two tablespoons, roughly. Okay, looks good. Put it back on the, put my bread right in there. And now I'm gonna to toast it up. I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of salt. I'm gonna put it on medium high, since it's on low. And I wanna make sure all my bread is, is coated with some olive oil, so I'm gonna go back to the pan again. Probably another, another tablespoon or so. Just drizzle it over it. And the secret is not to, um, overcook them or cook them too fast. You want to kind of penetrate um, the cooking process in the bread itself. Now, the older the bread, the harder it is, um, and the quicker it's going to toast up. I'm going to hit a little bit more salt. While this is doing its thing, let's go ahead and check your potatoes. That's looking good right now. The bread is looking really nice. Got a couple of dark ones, darker than I, than I want, so keep your eye on it because the oil will do that. Take some of the pieces out of blank and take those guys out. It's probably going to need another five minutes or so so everything kind of gets nice and, you know, nice, a nice color, nice crisp to it. Much better now. Now they're really crisping up. You can hear them. They're talking to you. And now let's roll into the tomatoes. Cherry tomatoes, again, <clears throat> if you're at the farmer's market or at your local market and you see some beautiful heirloom and, you know, it's a bigger box of cherry tomatoes, then just go ahead and add lip. I mean, that's what I did. I went crazy. So these are, these are beautiful tomatoes, all sliced in half. Everybody slice those in half. So with your tomatoes, just kind of move them up, move them around a little bit. I also, I got these beautiful pearl mozzarella. Super cute. Look at these little babies. I'm going to get rid of the liquid as well because you don't want to have that in the dressing. Put that aside. Tomatoes are all done. And I'm going to just double check uh, what my potatoes look like because uh, we have five minutes, four minutes actually left for the first 20 minutes. So let me just double check on what that looks like. Okay, these guys are looking really, really beautiful. Turn over here for a second, grab my camera. 
see how they look? Now we're going to have to do the flip. We're going to have to flip all of them because we want to have a really crunchy crust. I'm using the temperature. So you can use a spatula to flip them over. I'm going to put these potatoes back in the oven for about another five minutes or so. Now it's for the salad dressing. So um, that is really one of my favorite parts of this. So I'm going to grab my immersion blender. i uh, get my immersion blender out. Grab your shallot, a shallot. I'm going to use a smaller one. I'm going to finish my white. Cheers. I'm going to check on the toasted crumbs. Oh, there. Yeah. These cubes are ready to go. Now, turn off the fire on the cubes and get your Parmesan cheese. Grab your grater and just do freehand grade Parmesan cheese on top. This is going to add a lot of flavor. You know, if you want to do two tablespoons, go for it. If you want to do three, go for it. Do whatever makes you happy. Let this melt on there for a second while I grab the 2014 Pinot Noir. Why this Pinot Noir? In 2010, I met a vineyard owner by the name of Bob. I went up to meet him and I went to see his vineyard at Pinot Noir. And I wanted to do a Central Coast Pinot Noir for my very, very first Pinot. I met a lot of growers, and, but it, everything kind of led me back to Bob. Hold on that thought. So, cheese is on the, on the bread. You check out the potatoes. Everybody get to their oven, check out the potatoes. These guys are done. If your potatoes aren't done yet, they're not the color that you see here, that dark brown color, not a big deal. Keep them in there. I'm going to put these guys aside and go back to my story. So, Bob called me and he said, Tim, I have some grapes for you. I'm like, great. So I got two tons, one and a half roughly, that year, 2012. Bottled the wine, sold the wine. It's 2012 vintage. Sold out in about eight months. A couple regional competitions and scored 98, 96, double gold, gold. For my first Pinot Noir, I was pretty blown away of how beautiful the Central Coast from Bob's Vineyard Pinot came out. Wild strawberry, cranberry, pomegranate, cedar, a little bit of earth. This is from one of the most famous vineyards called Clark and Telephone. Yes, Bob owns Clark and Telephone Vineyards. I love this Pinot. Um, Bob has um, now contracted out his vineyard to Camus and so I can't get the grapes. Um, that's why we did a 2016 in, in Mendocino County, North Coast, and a 2019 on Caneros, which is turning out to be spectacular. And we're gonna bottle that sometime next year. If you have your Pinot, smell that earthy Pinot Noir that I call a Burgundian funk. People always ask me, what's your favorite wine? For my Pinots, the Vacher Pinot is mind blowing. But if I didn't have that, I would say this one is my number one for the Pinot out of the two Pinots. Let's go ahead and get that shallot into the um, measuring cup if you have that. If you don't have an immersion blender, then if you have a little Cuisinart, that's great. If you don't have a Cuisinart, then the best thing I would have to suggest is you take your shallot, you peel your shallot obviously, but you go ahead and press it like a garlic. Scrape all the goodness um, from that shallot into your little mixing bowl. German mustard, I love this brand. They're not sponsoring us, but I love this brand. Really delicious. My Pyrex, get my teaspoon here, teaspoon or so. Throw my shallots in, absolutely gorgeous. I'm gonna eyeball my three tablespoons of balsamic. One, two, three. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the red wine vinegar. One, two, three, more or less. A little bit of salt. Now let's go with a little olive oil. And we're gonna go with roughly four, five, or six. Super easy dressing, super delicious. So let's go ahead and give this a spin. So you wanna make a salad dressing that is acidic, but has some really great layering, good salt to it because of the tomatoes. It's everybody's own personal opinion on cracked pepper. Let's go ahead and assemble. Because the key to the panzanella salad is to have everything marry itself. We're going to put the wet ingredients on the bottom first, okay? 
do a little bit of dressing on the bottom, just a half of it. Put all the tomatoes in. Crack black pepper. We like quite a quite a bunch here in our household. Um, now we're going to put in the mozzarella. They go all in. You want to go ahead and do a quick mix. Then you want to go ahead and take your your beautiful toasted bread chunks. Everything's in. Take the rest of the dressing, put it on top. You're going to want to mix it. You want to toss it all together and let all the bread absorb the dressing. Okay, so now everything is tossed together beautifully. Now it's onto the chicken. If you have a convection bake or convection roast, 450. If you don't, 500. Make sure it's on the center rack so that's ready to go. I like to multi-purpose my pan. So this pan here that I use for the breadcrumbs, I'm going to clean this real quick. I'm going to put it on the fire and we're going to get it um, to almost a smoking point. So like I said before, you really want a neutral oil and then you can do a sunflower or a safflower oil. About three tablespoons roughly. Turn the burner on medium. Let's go ahead and get our three tablespoons. One, two, three. Let's grab our chicken. So everybody has their chicken? Good. I love that. Um, we have the oil kind of heating up here. It's all good. This is going to be the splatter part in a, in a few minutes. Everybody's got their brick from Home Depot. Simple brick wrapped in foil. Typically this dish is a whole bird. And I thought about it a few weeks ago. I'm like, you know what? I don't want to have that complication. And so it's like, okay, well, let's get boneless with skin, chicken breast, and thighs. As you can see, the skin is kind of not that it's opaque, but you look at it, it's like, yeah, the skin looks dry, right? That's what you want. So you want to just make sure everything is nice and not overly moist. Now, we want to salt the skin. You know, be, be pretty liberal on it. We're going to flip it over. So only on the skin part, we're going to do the salt. On the, on the flesh part, we're going to do pepper and we're going to microplane a lemon. So um, let's go ahead and flip these guys over. All right, they're all flipped over. I'm going to use the same hand that I use with salt. Same hand that I touch the chicken. Two different hands. So now we have um, the, the salt. Let me go ahead and clean my hands real quick. Wash them with, with um, soap. And let me hit the pepper mill real quick. Again, you use as much or little. It's up to you. It's, kind of, it's not dancing yet, but it's kind of dancing. You know, that's kind of, you want that dance, that rippling effect. You can get it a smoke point as well, um, but not everybody's comfortable with that, and that's totally fine. So that's why it's like, eh, when it's dancing, we're good to go. And get your microplane or your little grater. Just hit it, you know, hit everything with a little bit of zest. This lemon's a little soft. <laughs> it's actually a Myra lemon. We're zesting our chicken. We've already peppered it. We've salted it. My oil in my pan is dancing, so we are good to go. We'll do a quick pinot break. Cheers, everybody. With a pan, you kind of want to alternate. You don't want to put like the two breasts together. You want to be able to make, because you're going to put a brick down, right? So you really don't want to do the two breasts and then the thighs, and then it's going to be kind of uneven. You want to do breast, thigh, breast, thigh. So it's kind of even. It's going to splatter and spit and get all aggressive with you on the, on the oil. That's okay, just be prepared for it. Have an apron on. Here we go. First breast going down. Gonna just get pissed off at me. Yep, that's just kind of how it is. I know. Do its thing. You want to make sure you can heat on medium. You want to make sure you have a nice brown coating. You'll be able to see the coating. I'm gonna wash my hands. And now what you want to do is you want to take your brick. Or lay your brick down. Put it on the heaviest, the biggest part of, of the chicken breast. It's about six minutes, more or less. It's going to go right in your oven for about 20 minutes. Now, again, depending on the size of the chicken breast that you receive or you purchase, it will, the time will change. But I always pull that 20 minutes and take a look at it. We will finish the cooking when we saute, um, you know, the capers, the shallots, butter of course um, and a little bit of lemon so that's going to be the key so let me look at it now yeah it's looking really good the, the heat from the bottom is not only crisping the skin 
but now it's cooking the chicken breast, right, in the chicken. It's already going up on the side. You can see the skin color now changing. So we're part cooking them right here. Golden brown. Is everybody at golden brown? Turn off the fire, open up the oven, and put it right in. Close it up. Timer, 20 minutes. So now it's time to get ready and get prepared. Once a chicken comes out, you're going to need to have a plate. And we're going to take the chicken breasts out of the pan and put them on a plate, okay, with skin side up. Mentally prepare yourself. That handle has been in the oven. One time I forgot. When we take it out in the next 19 minutes, we're going to put the chicken on a plate, skin side up. And we're going to take a look at how, this, how the flesh of the chicken looks, right? I've already tossed the panzanella salad. Let me try the bread. Amazing. You get a large shallot. And based on my chicken breast, I'm going to do two shallots because these shallots are kind of small. And let's go ahead and start chopping them and getting them ready. All right, here we go. And get a little bowl ready, because you're gonna to wanna to have that ready to go. Then also grab your capers too. So let's go ahead and get these shallots done. I cut this guy in half and peel the skin. You wanna do it kind of a little bit smaller than onion. It's a little bit more than my recipe, but hey. We have a couple large chicken breasts. They're about three quarters of a pound each. This is how they are, nice and chopped. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in a bowl so it's ready for us. That is good. Then, with your capers, I had some large capers. So I've already chopped those guys, but they were the large capers with a stem. They look really, really pretty. The presentation is beautiful, so I just kind of chopped them up. I got my butter, I got the oil. Now the potatoes, so we're gonna, what we're gonna do with the potatoes is we're going to do a couple things. When the chicken is done, put the sauce together. We're gonna put the potatoes back in the oven just to kind of warm them up a little bit, right? Then we're gonna put the um, garlic and butter and oil on low, heat that up a little bit too, okay? We're gonna put them all together um, after like two minutes in the oven. So we're gonna put all that together. With your panzanella salad, go ahead and mix it up again. I want the bread to really soak in, soak it up. So cheers before I talk about the state of Napa Valley. We are getting there, guys. We are getting there. We have a few minutes left. We have five minutes left on the clock. We got the potatoes. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna actually, if you have room in your oven, throw the potatoes back in just a little bit. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna multitask, right? So let's go ahead and grab that. Just about five minutes just to warm up. Perfect. And then I'm going to just gonna turn on the garlic and rosemary, beautiful melted butter sensation. Just to warm that up a little bit as well. This one, get your lemon ready, like about half a lemon. The sauce that we're gonna prepare is, it's gonna be quick, really quick. And we're so close, let's go ahead and chiffonade the basil and put it into the panzanella, so that's done. So what you wanna do is you wanna grab about six or seven leaves, full leaves, and put them on top of each other. Usually you wanna have the largest leaf on top, smaller ones down below. So now I have probably seven or eight. You wanna roll them up like you're rolling a cigarette or something else. And then you wanna cut on the bias. You wanna cut diagonally, right? I'm talking to me. It's not changing color. I'm gonna turn the heat off. That's hot enough now. Chiffonade, nice and smooth, like this. See how beautiful that is? You wanna sprinkle it on top, and you wanna to toss that in. So go ahead and give it a toss. That looks absolutely spectacular. Let me show you here in a minute. The oven is ready to go. I can hear it. 20 minutes is up. Handle, been in the oven. Don't let it fool you. Let's go ahead and grab a chicken. I'm going to take the potatoes out. Potatoes are perfect. Go ahead and take your potatoes, your beautiful sauce, 
And now, put them all in the pool. Put them all in. And then you're going to want to toss them around. And now you want to just move it around. Get them all incorporated. You want all the potatoes to absorb all of that. You want to go ahead and hit this with some salt, a little more salt. And then we're going to go ahead and put this potatoes in this beautiful bowl here. All of the beautiful garlic in there. All the rosemary. So that's done, ready to go. Look at that, awesome. Okay, chicken time. Um, grab a tongue, and you want to remove a brick, obviously, from the bird. But there you go, not too bad. And so, let me show you what it looks like. This is about 95% done. My platter, here on the platter, I'm gonna make sure I have a hand with my pad, so it reminds me that, oh, that's hot stuff. Take the chicken and thighs off. Look at how this, listen, gorgeous chicken breast. That's gonna go right here. The pan, super hot. So, shallots go in. I would suggest keeping your glove on. <laughs> gonna turn up the heat a little bit, about medium high, because what we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and cook the shallots quickly with the capers quickly and the butter and the lemon. So everything comes together within a few minutes. Now, depending on the size of your breast, you might need to have the sauce hitting the breast a couple more minutes. Mine needs about one more minute and that is it. So, all the beautiful bits and pieces of the shallots and the oil that's already in there, the juice. Okay, now, throw in the capers. Throw them all in. Stir them around, mix them up. Turn your fire down a little bit. And now you want to throw your butter in as well. About a tablespoon or two, just depends. So we're just kind of melting the butter right now, cooking the shallots. I kind of want to swirl around. You want to swirl around the butter and the oil and the capers, just kind of like, just swirl it around, keep it on the fire. So now it's incorporating, now with your chicken, you're gonna to need to cook it for the last couple minutes. I need about a minute, so I'm gonna put them in right now, skin side up. Taking the breasts, put them in there, and literally it's gonna be, again, depending on, depending on your, your chicken itself. Then you wanna take your lemon, and you wanna squeeze the lemon around the edge of the pan to incorporate some acid. The seeds go in there, that's okay. Just go around, but you're not making the whole thing acidic. This is just doing a little bit, a little kiss of acid. This looks really good. It is done. So I'm going to go ahead and plate the chicken again on my plate itself. And what I want to do is I want to put a little bit of the sauce on top, but I want to do it around the, around the sides first. So just kind of loosen it up a little bit. Go ahead and pour the sauce around the sides. So now, I'm gonna take the red raining chunks and just put a little bit on top, just a little bit. That, my dearest friends, is my Tuscan roasted chicken under a brick. So, I put this on the side right here. Panzanella, got my beautiful potatoes. I need a spoon to move them around. Nice and crispy, hot. Hey, these, these are hot, so don't forget. Let's go ahead and serve it up here. Beautiful, beautiful potatoes. Amazing panzanella salad. And last but not least, the incredible chicken. Gorgeous Saturday evening dinner. Right, I mean, I'm gonna go right into the panzanella salad. Oh my God, I'm gonna go into the chicken. The crispiness of the skin, the saltiness of the capers, a little bit of lemon. My family, though, loves more sauce. So I'm always like, okay, we'll do more sauce. So don't be bashful. Get all the beautiful little capers and shallots and yumminess. And with a pinot, it's a perfect marriage. Again, I am so humbled by everybody's support and love. And I love to be able to share with you not only my craft of wine, 
but also my family recipes and what I do in the kitchen when I'm home. I love everybody. I really, really do. I want to thank you so much for your incredible support and your incredible enthusiasm. And I want to thank you again for everything you've done. Have a wonderful weekend, wonderful dinner tonight. I'll stop talking. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers.